Hi guys, welcome back to my series on permanent and healthy weight loss and today we will carry on where we left off and it is dietary with fat. So now you know that it's wrong to think that all dietary fats are your worst enemies and that your diet should ideally be zero fat. In fact, your body needs dietary fat, for example, to uh, absorb fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E and K, uh, to produce hormones, to regulate your uh, body temperature and blood circulation, uh, to maintain and to rebuild your brain and body cell membranes, to support your immunity and nervous system, and to keep your hair, uh, skin and scalp healthy. So as you can see, there are awful lots of essential functions and the key here is to get the right kind of fat in your diet. In a nutshell, you need to get mono and polyunsaturated fats, you need to limit saturated fats and you need to avoid trans fats which are also known as partially or completely hydrogenated fats fatty acids, oils, vegetable oils, or shortening. Experienced nutritionists can spot a person on a very low fat diet by inflamed or flaky skin and hair and skin dryness. In fact, very low fat intake can make you unhappy, uh, limit your brain's full potential, and make losing weight much more difficult and here's why there are some fatty acids that are called essential because your body cannot produce them work without them or burn fat efficiently these are called omega-3 and omega-6 these essential fatty acids must come from diet uh, for omega-3 choose cold water fish uh, flax seeds walnuts and their oils and omega-6 can be obtained from most unsaturated vegetable oils especially sunflower and sesame oil as well as raw nuts seeds legumes cereal and even eggs and meat omega-3 has anti-inflammatory properties and omega-6 increases inflammation and and also your body needs both of these essential fatty acids to function, the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 that you need to maintain should be less than 4 to 1. As nowadays vegetable oils which are rich in omega-6 and are very cheap to produce, uh, these oils are added to most commercially baked and fried foods uh, most people get. 10 to 1 or even 30 to 1 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 in their diet. And this imbalance is very harmful for our health and it can lead to numerous nasty diseases coming from inflammation, say diabetes, arthritis, uh, asthma and so on. In relation to weight loss, this incorrect ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 will make it much more difficult to lose weight because it, on the contrary, facilitates fat storage. So to draw a conclusion at this point, the right kind of fat will help you burn your own fat and boost your metabolism. I would say don't worry about getting enough omega-6 every day. The best thing to do is to eat more omega-3 at the expense of omega-6. I think the easiest trick uh, for doing that is to eat oily fish twice a week and you're there. Okay, the next thing that you need to do is to limit saturated fats. These fats have no positive benefit for your health whatsoever and increased consumption of saturated fats can lead to heart problems, cancer and even cause your brain cells to age quicker. Most foods contain all kinds of fat including unsaturated fats that we need to get in our diet and saturated fats. So it's not really possible to eat a diet completely free of saturated fats. But what we can do is to keep our intake of saturated fats as low as possible. It is easy to spot saturated fats. These are animal fats like visible white fat, marble and lard. Also full fat cheese and butter are very high in saturated fats. 
you need to keep your intake of saturated fats uh, below 10% of the total amount of calories that you consume per day. As a rule, a product is high in saturated fats if it contains 5 grams of saturated fats or more uh, per 100 grams of product. Surprisingly, scientific research has shown that coconut oil, which is a plant source of saturated fats, is much less harmful for your body than animal uh, saturated fats and is safe for cooking. But of course, little amounts. And finally, avoid industrial trans fats. Industrial trans fats are man-made fats uh, manufactured in factories at high temperatures by chemically adding hydrogen gas to oils to convert them from unsaturated to saturated. And what this does is uh, making them solid or semi-solid uh, at room temperature. Uh, trans fats act as emulsifier, holding all ingredients together and it gives foods that flaky, crispy desired uh, texture. Uh, this is a purely shelf life extension process as uh, the product is less prone to oxidation. This is clearly very beneficial for the businesses and initially it was thought to be um, a healthier option uh, replacing animal fats, but later researchers showed that actually trans fats are simply not suitable for human consumption and their molecule is dangerous for human cell membranes. Put simply, trans fats are literally the worst thing that you can put into your body. Some of the health problems that can be caused by consumption of trans fats are uh, liver dysfunction, increased risk of heart diseases, uh, stroke, uh, diabetes, infertility, cancer, uh, even some psychological problems like depression, irritability and aggression. Trans fats are far more harmful than saturated fats coming from red meat or dairy. Trans fats are also guilty for making us fat. They are very hard on the liver and as a result our hormonal balance just becomes a mess. Also our body doesn't know what to do with them so we can gain weight in very unusual places. I personally know a guy who would just get bigger overall whenever he would put on some weight, but at some point in his life he started loving these oven fries. You know, the ones that you buy frozen and then you put them in the oven for I don't know how many minutes and they're ready. So he just developed a double chin. But luckily he spotted that connection himself and as soon as he gave up eating deep fried foods, the chin just disappeared by itself. Apart from anything deep-fried, uh, foods that most often contain trans fats are commercially baked goods like pies, cakes, pastries, biscuits, um, puff pastries, spring rolls. There are some products that you may be surprised to know that have trans fats and these are granola bars, uh, frozen puff pastry, uh, frozen pizza bases. Uh, powdered coffee creamers. By the way, I strongly encourage you to go to my blog post to this video. I have made a list of the most popular foods that contain trans fats uh, so that the next time you do your shopping you will be more careful. And also I have put down the possible names uh, how trans fats can be uh, labeled and indicated on the ingredient list. To avoid trans fats overall, I think the best thing to do is to read the full list of ingredients or to avoid junk food overall because it's just not healthy anyways. Home-cooked meals and desserts have much more goodness and love in them rather than uh, junk, fast food and takeaways. I also think that home-made uh, meals and desserts are much more delicious. So I strongly encourage you to uh, choose homemade over ready-made as often as possible. And just a final advice to finish, please do not be fooled by zero fat or fat-free foods. Such writing on the packaging almost guarantees a business success to the manufacturer because most people who want to lose weight would rather buy something that says zero fat. But 
Unfortunately, weight loss or health goals will not be achieved by doing that. Uh, to compensate for the reduced fat and loss texture, uh, these products have added sugar, salt, uh, flour, starch, thickener, uh, and some weird, unusual substances and chemicals. So it would be so much better to buy a full fat version of that product and just enjoy it within wise limits. Sugar content in these products will lead to even more weight gain and prevent you from losing weight. And just why? You'll find out in my next video which will be on carbs. So stay tuned! I really hope that you learned a lot from watching this video and that your weight loss becomes much easier now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!